Hey, what's up? I'm going to show you about the uh, Pi Game display stretching. It's kind of tricky at first, especially if you're on like a normal screen or whatever. So it's for high DPI settings, high dots per inch, or at least so-called. That's why everything looks really weird, really blown up on my screen because I have the DPI blown out. So what you need to do, some people have done this and they can't see the result in Pi Game. So what I've done is I've gone in right here and pit my uh, control panel, all control panel items, display, change the size of all text items. And I went ahead and just blew it up to 150 to better demonstrate this. Um, 150 is like usable at 1080p, but I'm recording this at 720p. So medium would probably be more realistic for somebody with poor eyesight slash good balance for uh, screen real estate. But anyway, let me get to it here. So if you're on that regular smaller 100% default, you're not going to notice because it's not going to, nothing's going to try and scale most likely. At least not from my experience. So by blowing everything up, then anything that is DPI aware, so to speak, should automatically catch that flag and go, hey, I'm going to let Windows expand me so that I look big like everything else. So that like all these menus are nice and big and stuff like that. So on some applications, it might be desirable, but in Pi game, it might not be. So anyway, what you want to do is you want to go to one way to find it is to go to a path browser here. I'm in the idle editor. And then if I go down to site packages here and expand that, just double click on it. Um, if you're in a normal DPI, it shouldn't be all cut off like this. This is the other bad thing is a lot of people don't test in the higher DPI things. Um, where am I looking for? Pi game right here. Pi game. And then if we noticed on the Pi game on the page about display mode settings, in the Pi game reference, it said there's something called prevent. Where is it at? Okay, so we got to go up to examples. I'm sorry. So there's an examples folder right here. And then if we go, so that's kind of like the path to it. It's, um, or you can just use a regular like Explorer browser and go to program files, Python, lib, site packages, and then go into Pi game should just be called Pi game, I think. I don't know if the word package is actually part of it or if, the, if this little editor is just tacking that on. So go to Pi game and then go to examples and then scroll down alphabetically. We should see a prevent right here, prevent display stretching. So I'm going to double click this to open it. And uh, so what this is, is this is supposed to be either Pi game examples, prevent display stretching, prevent the display stretching on Windows. It's supposed to be an example program to show you. Kind of like a lot of the Pi game examples, they're probably a little bit dated. Um, and the, I don't know, the code's not exactly how I would do it, but it kind of illustrates the purpose anyway. So what it's doing in here is you can just ignore the sys thing. Is that important? I don't think so. That's just good for exiting. No, this is good for the interpreter stuff. This is good for the generic operating system stuff. These are just some constants to set some text and background color. And then right here, what it's doing is it's testing if your OS is NT as opposed to like maybe Linux or um, Windows 9X or whatever the other possibilities might be. And then if it's not NT compatible, which any modern windows would be um, and or if it's less than version 6 which version 6 was Windows Vista I think mine's like uh, 6.2 for Windows 8.1 Windows 7 was like 6.1 if I remember correctly so a lot of people refer to it as the so-called kernel version because it doesn't exactly line up with the Windows version 
necessarily like Windows 7, Windows 10, all that kind of stuff. Okay, then um, then it's just importing Pi games and it's importing C type. C types is the one that's actually that's the tricky one. So right here it's just testing. It's saying, hey, basically if you're running Python from Windows, then just automatically select yes. So that means that Y means it's going to be DPI aware and prevent stretching. Um, otherwise, if you're at the console running regular Python.exe or Python 3 or whatever, um, and this is only for Windows, it's going to ask you. It's going to say, hey, uh, you know, do you yes or no? Where's. Okay, and then. Um, based on what you pick, if you pick Y, or if it was automatically picked for you, stretching is prevented, and otherwise it is not prevented. So the best thing obviously to do is to run this from the command line, because otherwise it's just automatically gonna prevent stretching. And even if you blow it up to this mode like I did, you're still, I mean, you might kind of be able to tell, but you won't be able to flip it back and forth. So uh, then what it's doing right here is it's basically saying, if you choose Y or if they chose it for you, um, then it's going to and basically take this. This could have been just right here. They just do it the nice way of like assign this whole long thing to that. And then on that call this. So this is a Windows API function. I actually, okay, I think I looked this one up. So you could just literally copy and paste this into a web search. And probably the first result that's going to come up is a Win32 API function, blah, blah, blah. Click through on that and you'll see a little bit. They'll warn you like, no, don't use this. It could, you know, be weird or whatever. I don't think it's too big of a deal. And I don't think we have much other option with uh, Python because I don't see how you'd really control the manifest that easily, have a manifest and all that. So anyway, what it, it will tell you below, if you scroll down the details on it, it's going to say that a, a zero, a non-zero value is basically saying it returned true. So that means that this went into effect. And so right here, it's just gonna, after it does all of this, after it calls this, what I did was I rewrote this and I captured this value and stuff. I'll show you that one at the end. Um, but then what it's gonna do is then it's gonna initialize the display. I'm not 100% positive if this order matters or not. I would kind of assume it does, but um, you can experiment with it. Cause normally you wanted like, probably do your initializations at the top of the file. I don't know, whatever. Um, it's gonna initialize the display module. It's going to uh, set a constant for resolution that's kind of small. You know, it's kind of like half the size of like maybe the smallest screen you'd probably use in Pygame. And then it's going to initialize a screen with that resolution, with that little 350 by 350. Again, I'm at a, like 1280 by 720 right here for reference. And then right here, it's going to render a message with, you know, initialize the font, um, you know, just some boilerplate stuff right here to like get a font going and then to print some stuff on the screen about it. And then right here, this control loop, again, not exactly the way I would code it. I'm not into using like Booleans and stuff like that, uh, like they have here, but big deal. So it's just setting a flag to get out of the while loop. So anyway, what it's going to do is it's going to set some, take some notes of some times. It's going to come in here and this should be while running was set to true. So it's going to enter into this loop for event and pie game get event. So it's going to pull out an event into this variable and then it's going to take that variable and it's going to check the type if it's equal to the equivalent of a pie game quick. Cause when we imported pie game up here or when they did, they are actually, they didn't, one of the things they're supposed to do is do most of their imports all the way up here, but they did it down here for whatever reasons. Um, they imported it as PG, so that is Pygame. And uh, where'd that go? So it's saying if it's equal to the constant quit for the event type, then set that running flag to false, and then it will still go ahead and drop through all this stuff to draw some lines and um, blit them to the screen and update the clock ticks and flip the page and adjust the counter. And then when it gets all the way back up here, if that quit from you clicking the X or whatever, it's gonna go, oh, while running is now false. And then it will finally bounce out and come down to Pi game quit. So anyway, I just wanted to do a quick run through on what that code's doing. And I'm gonna come over here 
And what I can do is I can just type Python and then minus M to run a built-in module. And we're going to run the pygame.examples because remember we navigated to the site packages pygame and then under that the examples folder. And then it's the prevent display stretching. And you can add pi if you want. It's, I think it's optional. So I'll do this. Do we want to uh, prevent stretching? So I'll say no. So boom, stretching is not prevented. So in other words, this is DPI unaware, I believe, if I have it correct. So this is a pretty, I mean, it's supposed to be kind of a relatively small box, 350 by 350. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to hit Alt Print Screen to capture it. And I'm going to come over to Paint and just paste it in here. And then, so for reference, and then if we kind of scroll down here, let me make sure I was up. I got it pretty snug up in that corner. If I scroll down here, let's see, you can see with my pixels right here, it's like 540 by 574 or something. Really what we're measuring is this inside, this client area. So that's supposed to be 350. But either way, if you look like, so that would be like somewhere like right here, right? We're still over 500 if we subtract the borders and the title bar and all that. So that's just, that's way bigger than we asked for, right? Okay, so I'm going to close that. And then I'm going to hit up. Oop, highlight this window. I'm going to hit up and run it again. And this time I'm going to say yes, prevent stretching. Hit the Y. So then when I hit enter, now you can see, if you remember, it's a lot smaller. So I'm going to highlight it and hit Alt Print Screen again, which just captures that window only to the clipboard. Come back over here. I'm going to paste it right next to this one so you can see. So this one is uh, DPI aware. So once again, if I have my terminology correct. So obviously it's much smaller. If we come in here, um, like, you know, what do we have up here? We're So the, let me just... I'm just going to uh, control Z that I'm going to repaste it. Just leave it right on top of that one. We'll line up the edges here roughly. My mouse is kind of crappy. Okay. So now if we come down here and check it, we're pretty close. We're a little over 350 because of the borders and stuff. But if we subtract, like if I were to go try and get as close as I can right here, and then I'm just going to crop out this little client area, like I was saying, control shift X and windows paint. And then we can see down here, 351 by, so I, I was off by a pixel in one dimension. I must have grabbed like a slight hair of the border or something, but um, you can see it's it's effectively 350 by 350. So like I said there, um, the trick is to make sure that, you know, you right click, Go to screen resolution person. I'm running Windows 8.1. It might be different on newer or older. This only works with Windows Vista and higher. And of course, like Microsoft does, they sort of have like an evolving API. So uh, whatever. I would just round down and stick to the one with Vista because there are other calls and stuff. So anyway, once I'm going to pause this. Okay, so I'm going to open this other one that I edited. Where to go? This one. And I've changed this one up a little bit. I put all the imports up at the top. I moved most of the uh, constants up to the top. And then I just made it set DPI aware to zero automatically. Set if the OS is NT and the version is greater than or equal to six. So I basically flip that conditional around and then it checks if the first argument passed in is a yes, then, um, then it, here's where it grabs that DPI aware value, which becomes true. Right. So, uh, and then what do we have here? Then I set a message for DPI aware or unaware, very similar. I just went and chopped down the code a little bit. I left the initializations for this stuff down here. Um, this is all the same right here. That one, I obviously pulled out the constant. And then the control loop, you can see I don't have that flag anymore. I just have while hard-coded to true. I left those the same. 
And then when I come in here, instead of setting that flag, I just call Pi Game Quit, which I think is optional, and then I call uh, Sys Exit. So just if you just call Pi Game Quit, it will still try and run this other stuff and complain and then crash out. But um, Sys Exit seems to make it just go ahead and cleanly exit. And other than that, I think it's mostly the same. So what I'll do here is you can do a run, run customize, which means run with a command line perimeter. So I'm going to say, yes, I want it to be uh, display DPI aware. And then you can see there it is 350 by 350. If you remember, that's the right size. And then I'm going to switch back to that window and I'm going to run customize. And this time I'm going to say no, no, don't be DPI aware. And then boom, it's big again. So just last reminder, you have to scale to like 125, 150% in order to see that effect. Otherwise, if you follow along with that kind of code and everything, it should still work. But you should at least um, go in here, make text larger or smaller, and set that to one of these one of these something bigger than if you can see the dpi if it says 96 dpi you need to go above 96 dpi once again if i've got my terminology right so anyway i'm gonna get out of this mode and uh of course i'll have to sign out and then sign back in so it can redo all my windows and stuff so anyway maybe that helped you out thanks a lot for watching